Hi guys, I'm Josie Royce and I have a princess story for you today. This one is called Brave and it's by Disney Pixar. It's about a young girl called Merida and she goes on some pretty cool adventures. Here we go. Long ago, there was a kingdom called Dunbrook nestled in the Scottish Highlands. Though the kingdom was young, the land was ancient. A place full of stories and magic and danger. King Fergus and Queen Eleanor had brought peace to the warring clans of the kingdom. They also were raising their own clan, mischievous triplets, Harris, Herbert and Hamish, and one teenage princess called Merida. Queen Eleanor had high hopes for Merida and high standards for a princess. She thought a princess should be well-rounded, knowledgeable about her kingdom, and above all, perfect in every way. In Queen Eleanor's eyes, Merida had much to learn. Her mother's opposite, Merida lived for her rare days of freedom, where she could grab her bow, climb onto her horse Angus, and spend the day in the forest. Merida was a skilled archer and rarely missed a shot. One day, Merida returned to the castle to find her family at dinner. King Fergus was telling his favourite story, how he had fought the monstrous bear, Mordew, and lost his leg. Mordew had, hadn't been seen since. No one was frightened by the king's story. They'd all heard it a hundred times. The family meal was interrupted when some letters arrived. At the Queen's invitation, three neighbouring clans would present a suitor to come for Merida's hand in marriage. Merida was horrified. I won't go through with it, she shouted, and ran from the room. Queen Eleanor followed her. She told Merida a legend about an ancient prince who had broken tradition and split from his three brothers. Their kingdom had fallen to ruin. Legends are lessons, Eleanor told Merida. They ring with truths. Merida was not convinced. I don't know what to do, Eleanor said to Fergus later. If only she could try to see that I do this out of love. Meanwhile, Merida was complaining to Angus. I don't want my life to be over. I want my freedom. I swear, Angus, this isn't going to happen, she vowed. Merida's objections came too late. A few days later, the clan's ship sailed into Dunbrock's as Eleanor dressed Merida in a formal gown to receive them. I can't move, Merida complained. It's too tight. It's perfect, her mother said smiling, trying to soothe her. The royal family welcomed the Lord and their clans in the castle's great hall. Lord MacGuffin, Lord Mackintosh, and Lord Dingwall, the heads of each clan, stepped forward to present their sons. First was young Mackintosh, with his own sword. He vanquished a thousand foes his father, Lord Mackintosh bragged. Young MacGuffin was necked with his bare hands. He vanquished 2,000 foes, his father, Lord MacGuffin boasted. Wee Dingwall was the third suitor. He vanquished 10,000 foes single-handedly, his father, Lord Dingwall bluffed. Merida was unimpressed by the young lords. She tried to think of a way out of the marriage. Alas, the peace among the clans proved fragile. A few insults were all it took to set the clansmen brawling. Luckily, one withered look from Queen Eleanor was all it took to restore order. The Queen clarified the rules. Only the firstborn of each of the leaders would compete for the hand of the princess. The princess herself would determine the challenge. Firstborn? Merida's eyes lit up as an idea formed in her head. She leapt to her feet, crying, I choose archery. Let the games begin, said the queen. 
The competition began on the castle grounds at high noon. Merida watched from her throne as the Lord's sons lined up before her. Archers, to your marks, Queen Eleanor declared, and may the lucky arrow find its target. Young MacGuffin took the first shot and nearly missed the target. Young Macintosh's shot was slightly better. His attitude, however, was not. Wee Dingwall was the clumsiest of them all, but to everyone's amazement, he hit the bullseye. Just then, Merida strode onto the field. I am the firstborn descendant of Clan Dunbrock, she declared before the stunned crowd, and I'll be shooting for my own hand. Merida, I forbid it, the queen cried. Merida ignored her and raised her bow. One by one, Merida fired her arrows at the suitor's targets. She hit them all dead centre, even splitting Wee Dingwall's arrow right down the middle. Queen Eleanor was furious. You don't know what you've done, the Queen told Merida back inside the castle. It will be fire and sword if it's not set right. You're a beast, Merida replied. I'll never be like you. Angrily, she slashed the family's tapestry between the images of her and her mother. Hurt and angry, Merida fled from the castle on Angus. She was crying too hard to watch where they were going. Suddenly, Angus lurched to a stop, sending Merida flying. When she got to her feet, she found she was standing inside a ring of giant stones. A mysterious blue light flickered amongst the stones. It whispered to Merida. Then more blue lights appeared. They seemed to beckon Merida forward. The lights formed a chain leading deep into the forest. Taking hold of Angus's reins, Merida followed the blue lights. They led her to a small cottage in the woods. The cottage belonged to an old woman who presented herself as a woodcarver, but it didn't take long for Merida to realise the woman was a witch. Quickly, Merida explained, If I could just change my mum, then my life would be better. The witch told Merida about a prince who had asked long ago for the strength of ten men. She showed Merida the ring the prince had given her. Two crossed axes were carved into it. Merida would get a similar spell. The witch set to work, throwing things into her cauldron. When she was done, the witch pulled out a cake and handed it to Merida. Within minutes, Merida and Angus found themselves back at the Ring of Stones. There was no sign of the witch or her cottage. Back at the castle, Merida offered the cake to her mother. She watched closely as Eleanor took a bite. Now, why don't we go upstairs to the Lords and put this behind us, Eleanor said. But as they entered the great hall, Eleanor stumbled. My head is spinning like a top, she said. Was the spell working, Merida wondered. As she helped the Queen upstairs, the Lords spotted them. They wanted to know the Princess's decision. Queen Eleanor managed to put them off. Upstairs, Merida helped Eleanor into bed. The next thing Merida knew, a huge furry shape was rising up from the sheets. Mum, you're a bear, Merida exclaimed. That scaffy witch gave me a gammy spell. Hearing this, Eleanor Bear let out an angry roar. Downstairs, King Fergus smelled a bear. Ever since Mordew had eaten his leg, the king had hunted down every bear he'd come across. And now there was a bear in his castle. King Fergus quickly gathered the clans for a hunt. Merida knew that she and her mother had to get out of the castle and find the witch. Merida's brothers created a shadow bear to distract King Fergus and the lords. Merida and Eleanor sneaked out through the kitchen. I'll be back soon, Merida told the boys. Help yourselves to anything you want as a reward. In the forest, Merida and Eleanor Bear found the witch's cottage with a message she left behind. Fate be changed, look inside, mend the bond torn by pride. Soon a thick cloud enveloped them.
When it cleared, the cottage was in ruins. Merida and her mother searched for something to turn Eleanor human again, but found nothing. Merida and Eleanor Bear spent the night in the ruins of the witch's cottage. In the morning, they were hungry. Merida caught a fish for breakfast. Like a queen, Eleanor Bear refused to eat it until it was cooked. Before long though, Eleanor Bear was catching fish on her own. Soon, Merida and her mother were playing together in the stream. For the first time in a long while, they enjoyed each other's company. Then, abruptly, Eleanor Bear Bear's eyes turned black and cold. She sniffed at Merida, as if she didn't recognize her. Merida screamed, and the warmth returned to the bear's eyes. You changed, Merida told her. Like you were a bear on the inside, too. Just then, a trail of wisps led into the forest. They'll show us the way, Merida said. Merida and Eleanor Bear soon came upon an old stone arch with crossed axes carved on it, like the witch's ring. It led to an ancient ruin. Why did the wisps bring us here, Merida wondered. As they explored the ruins, Merida fell through a hole. She was in the throne room of a crumbled castle. Merida spied a tablet engraved with the pictures of four princes. The tablet had been split in two. The fourth prince was broken off from the rest. Split, Merida murmured like the tapestry. Suddenly, Merida realized that the witch's prince had lived here, and he was the same prince of her mother's legend. The strength of ten men, she said, seeing the room was covered in claw marks. The prince became Morju. At that moment, Morju returned to his lair. Morju lunged at Merida, but Eleanor Bear pulled her to safety just in time. They raced away from the ruins. Mother and daughter ran until they came to the ring of stones. I know what to do now, Merida said. She had to find the family tapestry and mend the bond torn by pride. Together, they returned to the castle and climbed up an old well. Inside the great hall, they found King Fergus, the rest of the clans and the clansmen locked in battle, all because of Merida. Merida looked to her mother for help. There was nothing Eleanor Bear could do. It was up to Merida to stop the fight. Merida marched into the center of the room. She was just about to agree to marry one of the Lord's sons when, from the shadows, her mother stopped her. Eleanor Bear mind that she wanted Merida to say, The Queen feels that we should find love in our own time, Merida translated. A great idea, young Macintosh exclaimed. The other Lord's sons had agreed. They too wanted to be able to choose their own fates. Everyone cheered. That settles it, Lord MacGuffin said. Let these lads try to win her heart before they win her hand. With the clans out of the way, Merida and her mother hurried upstairs to get the tapestry. But Eleanor started acting more like bear again. Just then, Fergus entered and saw the bear. No, cried Merida. It's not what you think. Fergus wouldn't listen. He slashed at the bear, who struck back, knocking him to the ground. The commotion drew the lords and the rest of their clans. Mum, run, Merida cried. Eleanor bolted away with the men in hot pursuit. Merida tried to explain to her father what had happened, but he didn't believe her. He locked her in the tapestry room for her own safety and gave the key to Mordy, the nursemaid. When he set off to hunt the bear, Merida was desperate to get out. Through the window in the door, she spotted three little bear cubs. They were triplets. They'd eaten the rest with a magic cake and turned into bears too. Get the key, Merida told the cubs. The triplet cubs chased Morty. She was so scared, it didn't take long to get that key. Meanwhile, a terrified Eleanor bear was running from the hunters. She only passed a bit to see if they were gaining on her. Indeed, Fergus and the lords were closing in on the bear. They picked up Eleanor bear's tracks and picked up their speed. 
Freed by the triplets, Merida grabbed the tapestry, along with the needle and thread. Merida and her brothers climbed onto Angus and raced into the forest to save their mother. As they rode, Merida mended the tapestry, while the bear cubs steered. Ahead of them, a group of wisps gathered. Merida urged Angus forward. She knew the wisps would lead them to her mother. At that moment, Fergus and the lords cornered Eleanor Bear in the ring of stones. They caught her with ropes and tied her down. The king raised his sword to the bear. Suddenly, to his surprise, Merida stepped in front of him. Are you out of your mind, lass? Fergus exclaimed. Gathering all her strength, she swung her sword and chopped off Fergus's wooden leg. Suddenly, another bear stepped into the ring. Mord you, Merida said with a gasp. The lords ran forward to attack the giant bear. Mordu swatted them away easily. Then he grabbed King Fergus and tossed him aside too. Mordu closed in on Merida bravely. Merida raised her bow and arrow, but Mordu loomed over her, going in for the kill. With a deafening roar, Eleanor Bear threw off the ropes that bound her. She charged at Mordu. Eleanor Bear shoved Mordu away from Merida. After a vicious battle, she pushed Mordu against a cracked stone. The stone toppled, crushing Mordu beneath it. In the silence that followed, a single wisp rode from the fallen stone and flew away. The ancient prince's soul had joined the wall of the wisps. Merida draped the mended tapestry over her mother, but nothing happened. Merida watched as the bear's eyes turned cold and black. I want you back. I just want you back, Mum. Merida said, throwing her arms around Eleanor's neck. I... I love you. Merida felt a hand brush her hair. She looked up and saw her mother smiling down at her. When their bond was repaired, the spell had been broken. Eleanor had changed back into the queen. The triplets, too, had turned into boys. The whole family was happily together again. Back at the castle, Merida and Eleanor began a new tapestry, one that would forever record the story of the challenge they had faced and conquered together. Later, they watched as the clan sailed for home. Queen and Eleanor would never again doubt that Merida's strong, free spirit was that of a worthy princess and the future Queen of Dunbrock. As for Merida, she had finally come to appreciate her mother's strength and courage. She knew now that she wouldn't change a thing about her. Well, I'd love to visit Scotland one day. Well, thanks for watching everyone. You can hit like and subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time. Bye!